But first, to the major breaking news, signs of life from the submarine that has been missing since Sunday. With just around 27 hours left of oxygen, search crews have reported hearing banging sounds near the wreck of the Titanic. The US Coast Guard says Canadian P3 aircraft detected underwater noises in the search area. Underwater noises in the search area. As a result, ROV operations were relocated in an attempt to explore the origin of the noises. Those ROV searches have yielded negative results but continue. These banging sounds have been reported as likely signs of life and they were close to the area where the submersible was last located. Leaked government documents also reveal banging sounds have been heard in this area. This is the first sign of hope in the desperate search to locate the tourist submarine carrying five people after it disappeared on its descent to the Titanic shipwreck. Oxygen supply right now is dwindling by the hour. It's, it's expected to expire sometime tomorrow our time, estimated to be around 26 hours of oxygen left. Media in the United States is now reporting that sonar devices have picked up noises every half an hour. This is a stunning development and gives the families of those missing some desperately needed hope that their beloveds will make it out alive. Among the five on board the Titan, British billionaire Hamish Harding, the CEO of Ocean Gate Expedition Stockton Rush, businessman Shazada Darwood, his son Sulman Darwood, and French diving expert Paul Henry Nagelet. He's a veteran of 30 dives to the Titanic. Before the banging sounds were detected near the Titanic, the US Coast Guard earlier gave a grim update, cautioning that even if they are able to locate the vessel, they may not be able to rescue everyone on board. The Coast Guard has coordinated search efforts, which has searched a combined 7,600 square miles, an area larger than the state of Connecticut. These search efforts have focused on both surface, with C-130 aircraft searching by sight and with radar, and subsurface with P-3 aircraft were able to drop and monitor sonar buoys. To date, those search efforts have not yielded any results. The underwater sounds this afternoon were the first contact from the Titan since Sunday, just one hour and 45 minutes after it began its journey to visit the, Titan the Titanic shipwreck off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada. We told you last night about CBS reporter David Pogue, who travelled on the Titan last year to visit the shipwreck. In that voyage, he said that they'd lost contact for about two and a half hours and they had to resurface and then venture down another day. He's now reported that he couldn't help noticing how many of the vessel's components seemed improvised. He gave several interviews today saying that there are seven ways to resurface if something goes wrong. He said the fact that the submarine hasn't surfaced, given it can do so even if passengers are unconscious, is deeply worrying. It could indicate it has become entangled in parts of the Titanic. This morning he spoke to Peter Stefanovic about his concerns. If they are underwater, I don't see how there is any hope. There, there's no, there are no other craft that can go to Titanic depths that can be mobilized in a day and a half. And even if there were, there isn't one that could tow it back to the surface. So I, I think the underwater search is an exercise in futility. And of course, those comments were made before the sonar picked up those banging sounds near the Titanic shipwreck just this afternoon. Now, the search is now involving the British, Canadian and French governments, as well as the United States. But the question is, as David Pogue just said, how to send a vessel to that area, some 3,800 metres below the surface, and how to stage a rescue when there's around 26 hours left before the oxygen is expected to expire. 
Simpsons writer and producer Mike Reese told the BBC that when he went on the Titan last year, he thought, the thought crossed his mind, that he may never come out of it alive. He said he was made aware of the risks before he went on the venture. I'm not optimistic just because I know the logistics of it and I know really, again, how vast the ocean is and how very tiny this craft is. And, you know, it's a beautifully designed craft. I, I, I can't disparage it, but it's meant to go down further than any, any other vessels can go. So the idea of kind of if it's down at the bottom and I don't know how anyone's going to be able to access it, much less bring it back up.